Hi there, this is Math 6, Unit 6, Lesson 8, Equal and Equivalent. So we're going to use some diagrams today to figure out which expressions are equivalent and which are just sometimes equal. So first we begin with a little algebra talk here, solving equations by seeing a structure. And it says to find a solution to each equation mentally. Just doing some mental math here. So first one, 3 plus what number can you think of? What can you put with 3 to get to 8? Well, hopefully you're thinking 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you count up to about 5. That would work there. The next one, you have 10. So 12, what can you take away from 12 to get down to 10? Well, 12 minus 2 can get you there. Okay, the next one's squaring a number. So remember to square a number. If I did like 4 squared, that's the same as 4 times 4 equals 16. So what number times itself can get you to 49? Knowing your math facts, you hopefully you're saying something like 7. All right. And this last one here, a little bit trickier, a little bit there. We have a number times 1 third. Well, multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by 3. So you're really thinking about what number can you divide by 3 to get to 6. Or another way of thinking about it is, if I multiply by the reciprocal, I would multiply 6 times 3, and that's going to give me the value of x. So what is 6 times 3? That's going to get you to 18. Okay, in this next section here, we're going to be looking at some tape diagrams to show that expressions are equivalent. And it says how to do it here. It says here's a diagram of x plus 2 and 3x when x has a value of 4. So you say if x is the value of 4, you make a, a bar that has a length of 4 right there. And the 2 is just going to be 2 squares. So that's the 2. And here is the 4 and the 4 and the 4, right? It's just like that. We're going to do the same thing in the next ones here. We're talking, trying to really look at what does it mean to be equivalent. Okay, and that's the idea. So the next one, it says we're going to do x is 3, and we're going to make an x plus 2 and a 3x. So if x is 3, we're going to go out here, 1, 2, 3, and that becomes our x value right there. And then we're going to say plus 2. So 2 is here. And then I can make that here with the green, maybe. All right, so that's x plus 2. And the other one is 3x. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 x's. And then all the same length. So 1, 2, 3. So. In this case here, when x is 3, are these equivalent? Do these bar graphs have the same length? You see, we're starting at the same point, but what you can see is they're not equivalent. If they're equivalent, they're going to be equal. All right. So for this value of x, when x is 3, I don't get the same length. doesn't quite work. Let's try another one. All right. What, if, what happens when, same equation here, x plus 2 and 3x, what happens when x has a value of 2? When x has a value of 2, we do a 2 plus 2, then we have x right here, there's our x, and plus 2 is right here. So that's my 2 and my x, so my x plus 2, here's x plus 2, and then we do 3x, which x has a value of 2, so we're going to do 3 of those. One, two, and three. Those are my th x's. One, two, three. Are these equivalent? No, nope, they're not equivalent. Starts the same spot, but this one is still larger over here, so they're not equivalent. Okay, well what happens when x has a value of one? Okay, so we do one of the x's. So here is an x. And we're going to add two. One, two. And x is the value of 1, so we'll do 1, 2, 3. Right? This is my 2, and x, and x, and x. So when we do this one, when x has a value of 1, we can see that the two expressions, x plus 2 and 3x, are equivalent for that value. 
meaning that x plus two in this case does equal three x when x equals one. That's the only time it's happened so far. When x had a value of one, then these two were equivalent. And we can see they're equivalent because the bar starts the same spot and ends the same spot there. That was not the case with any of the other ones. What happens if x is zero? Well, then we don't draw anything with that. We just draw two. And for three x, there's nothing to draw at all. So again, that is not gonna be equivalent because the other one doesn't even exist. So what can we tell about this? We can see that we have different expressions, x plus two and three x, and sometimes, like when it's equal to one, they're equal, but other times they're not. So when was this equal? Well, they were equal when x equal to one. When were they not equal? Well, they were not equal when, in this case, x equal three, x equal two, and x equal zero. And we can see that from the diagrams because the lines did not uh, line up the right way. It says draw a diagram of x plus three and a separate one of three plus x. Okay, well, let's do this here. Let's do uh, x plus three. Here's x plus three. And let's do a three plus x. Okay, something along those lines. So if I did x here and x here, and it's the same size as the x is the same, and I did threes at the same size. What do we notice about these pictures here? Well, is x plus three and three plus x, are they equal? Well, they have the same length, right? They're the same things inside of it. And we would say in this case here, that are they equal, when are they equal? They are always gonna be equal. The reason they're always gonna be equal is because they have the same exact values. It's just a different order. X plus three is always gonna be the same as three plus X. For any value of X you put in there, for any value of X you put in there, it's always gonna be equal. If I made this one, I have a one plus three is four, three plus one is four, it works great. If I have a 100, I have 103 and 103. This will always be true and always be equal for this one here. Unlike up, before, up above when we had the X plus two and the three X, those weren't always gonna be equal, were they? All right, let's look at one more thing here, identifying equivalent expressions. So equivalent expressions are ones that are going to be equivalent. They might look different, but they mean the same thing. So for example, a plus three is the same as three plus a. Those go together well. Also, we can say that a the same as one times a. Same exact thing. When we look at this one, we have um, a over three, right, is the same as one third a. If I multiply it together, I get a over three. Well, that works out to be the same thing there. Now the one that's a little interesting is when you do a plus a plus a, a plus a plus a is the same technically as doing three a's, right? Three a's together is three a's. And three a is the same as a times three. So those actually go together as well. A divided by a third is multiplying by the reciprocal. So what do we do to that one? We flip it and we multiply. So it also is a times three. So those four are actually all equivalent in that regard there. Okay, so in summary, we can use diagrams showing lengths of rectangles to see when expressions are equal. And sometimes we can see they're equal for some values of x, but for others they may not be. And that's kind of the idea. Sometimes the expressions are equivalent and sometimes they are not. And so we saw that then when we looked at things. So, um, you know, sometimes they don't line up, sometimes they do. In this case here we can see that when x is three, in this case here with the ones I gave us, we had two bars that end up coming in the same spot. Then you have some equivalent ones there for the value of x, but for the other ones, not quite so much. So sometimes two expressions are equal for only one particular value. So sometimes two expressions are equal for only one particular value, variable. Other times they seem to be equal no matter what value uh, variable. If they're always equal for the same value of the variables are called equivalent expressions. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. 
All right, so take a moment to work on your homework and then we'll come back around together in just a minute and we will check them off and see how you did. All right, homework time. We're gonna draw some, some bars for expressions where x is one, x is two, x is three, x is four, just like we did in our class today. So first we have x plus three and two x. So first we have x having a value of one. So we'll make a square of one. We'll call that x. And then we'll do three, one, two, three. And there's my three. For two x, we do an x and another x. And we see that these are not equivalent, are they? Okay, let's look at the next one. What if x is two? Are they gonna be equivalent? Well, if it's two, we go one, two, that's my x. Add a three, one, two, three for that one. And I, if I plug two in there, I'm gonna do an x of a value of two and another one. And again, a great one, but not gonna be equivalent, is it? Just not the same. Okay, how about when x is three? x plus three, we go one, two, three, that's our x value and then one, two, three for the plus three. So that's that one. And then two x's, one, two, three, one, two, three. In this case, they start the same spot, they end the same spot. These are going to be equivalent. How about when x is four? Well, we go out one, two, three, four, and we then add our three, and then two fours, one, two, three, four, one, three, four for two x's, and that is not gonna be equivalent. So they're equal when x equals three, and they're not equal when x equals, in this case here, one, two, and four. And we can see that happening right here. We can see that in this case, it's gonna end the same spot, whereas over here, not quite, not quite, and not quite. Okay, number two. Do 4x and 15 plus x have the same value when x is 15? Okay, well let's just see. If I take 4x and I substitute the x with a 5, what is 4 times 5? 20. Okay, if I take 15 plus x and I, sub I substitute the x for a 5, I get 15 plus 5 is 20. So do they have the same value when x is 5? Yes, they do. They have the same value. And you could draw a picture to show that there, right? I could draw an x, and an x, and an x, and an x, and then four of those with a value of five, like so. All right, that's my four x. And then I do a 15, which goes five, 10, 15 to here. And a value of one x, which is five, which is there. And we can see just with the bar, once again, that same spot, same spot, these are gonna be equivalent as well. All right, let's turn the page and see the next one. So, still going with the same question. So are 4x and 15 plus x equivalent expressions? Okay, now, we know that they worked for when x equaled five, when x equal five, it worked but not for all values of x. So we would say not equivalent. And the reason it's not equivalent is if it's equivalent, it has to work for all values of x. What if x was four? You'd have four times one. Does that equal 15 plus one? No, that's four, that's 16, not equal it doesn't always work. So yes, it worked for five, but not for all values. So it's not equivalent. Number three, check that two B plus B and three B have the same sum when B is one, two, and three. Okay, so let's do this. Two times one plus one equals two plus one is three, and three times one is three, so that's good. Two times two plus two equals four plus two is six, and two, I'm sorry, three times two is six, and then two times three plus three is nine, and three times three is nine. So, so far, 
everything seems to be equivalent. For each value we end of one, we get the same value in the other. Now why is that the case? Well, that's because 2b plus b is the same as b plus b plus b, right? 2b and b is 3b's, which is the same as 3b. So these expressions are gonna be equivalent, which means they're all gonna give you the same value for whatever value of b you choose. So do 2b, b, and 3b have the same value for all values of b? Yes, and we explained why right there. So are they equivalent expressions? Yes, and again, we just talked through why right there. Number four, 80% of x is equal to 100. 100. Write an equation that shows the relationship between 80% x and 100. Sure. So we could write it as a fraction, 80 over 100, 80% x equals 100. You could also write it as 0.8 or 0.80 x equals 100. Okay, and then what do we do? We divide by 0.8, divide by 0.8, and x equals 0.8 goes into 100.00. Move the decimal over, decimal over, and up. It goes in there one time for 8. Goes into six, uh, 20, two times for 16. Goes into 45 times, so x equals 125. And number 5, we're going to write a story problem for each one. Write an equation. So Jada's dog was 5.5 inches tall. Now it's 14.5 inches taller than that. How tall is a dog now? So however tall it is, if we take away the amount that it grew, 14 and a half, that puts us back to where it started at five and a half. So its height, subtracting the now part, uh, how much the taller part, gets us back to the original. So to solve that, we would then subtract, or add, sorry, 14 and a half. A half plus a half is one. Okay, so then 14 plus five plus one is 20. So our dog is 20 inches tall now. That's how you might solve that one. I think we have one more on the back side here. Lynn picked three, nine and three fourths pounds of apples, which was three times the weight Andre picked. So for Lynn, she had nine and three fourths, which was equal to three times whatever Andre did. So, can we find out how much Andre picked? Sure, let's write this as, a, as an improper. Four times nine is 36, plus three is 39 over four, equals three A. We're gonna divide both sides by three. So we have 39 fourths divided by three equals A. 39 fourths divided by three can be rewritten as 39 fourths times one third equals A. 3 goes into 39, 13. So you have 13 fourths equals A. 4 goes into 13 three times. 4 times 3 is 12. 13 minus 12 is 1. So 1 left over. So how many, how many pounds? There are 3 and 1 fourth pounds for Andre. Alright, that is it for today. Have a great day and we will see you next time.